Star Trek Online is one of those games that's been quietly adding content for over a decade at this point, catering to its dedicated fan base of players. I wanted to jump back in in 2021 just to see what changes have been made. I played upon the release of the game and I've taken a couple of characters over the years up to the max level. In 2021, I just wanted to see what kind of options are available. One of the criticisms of the game when it first came out was a lack of content. I remember people getting to the end game pretty quick, burning through the story content, and then having to do repeatable quests in order to level. That was one of the main criticisms. And in 2021, that is kind of gone because these are older games that I'm covering at the moment. The amount of content that's been added is huge and a lot of that content I think is responsible for why this game feels a lot more like Star Trek than it did when it launched. That was another criticism. It was kind of like this is uh, this is we're not doing enough Star Trekky things. Uh it's a lot of combat, a lot of fighting and it doesn't feel like Trek, traditional Trek. Uh I don't think that comes across quite as much anymore because I think the strength of this game, I'll talk about the combat in a little while, but I think the strength of this game is now the story. Ironically, it's the in-depth uh, recreation of the various time periods of Star Wars. Uh, of, I'm going to do that. I might do that a bit of Star Trek that... Uh, is it strength? They've just revamped the starting experience for people who are uh, want to experience the original series with Kirk and Spock, and I'm working through that having never played that starting experience before. So there are all those stories to do if you're interested in that time period. Then there's a kind of a TNG time period to do. There are also different factions now and stories for those, the Romulans and the Klingons. So it kind of caters to the star trek audience but it's taken a long time to get there but i feel like it's there now and the very thing that people were complaining about early on is now the strength of the game and it is the way that it brings that star trek feeling to the player it's in the it's in the the quest structure and the storylines uh how they're written what you're doing in the quests yes the game is still mostly combat and we do have this idea that Star Trek is a more cerebral series and we should be doing more than just fighting things. But I mean, in reality, I think a lot of Star Trek is is that it's an action show. It's an action adventure show and it has some big themes within that and a lot of science, a lot of theorizing, particularly if you're into the TNG era, the techno babble and stuff like that. But the philosophical episodes with Captain Picard debating uh, an alien race about, about the ethics of how it's treating its people, all that stuff. I think I think the criticisms level that STO were, that there's not enough of that and it's mo mostly warp into this uh, star system and shoot things. The way they get to those big themes is through the stories. And when you think about it, it's quite hard. How would you model that in terms of gameplay? Captain Picard debating a diplomatic issue. It's hard to think of how you would turn that into a game. And combat is something that you can model and something that's repeatable and something that's understandable in terms of progression. So it makes sense that it's at the core of the game, but I think it does a much better job now than it did at launch of feeling track. And it's through the strength of the stories, through the strength of... Um, yeah, the, the quests and, and so on. And the and the range of things that you can do and who you can do them with. So another thing that I remember, I, I, I mean, this is a personal thing, but when it first came out, I felt like this is a bit unfocused and all over the place. What, what era of Star Trek are we in? Pick an era and stick to it. In hindsight, that's wrong. Uh, I, I don't think that would have worked because this is Star Trek Online, the whole of Star Trek Online. So you have to cater to the people who are fans of the various iterations of Star Trek. And to not do that would have been a huge mistake. So who knew? I'm an idiot. But I think the way they've done it ultimately 
is the best decision. And whatever kind of a Star Trek fan you are, you can choose your era, you can choose your faction. Right up to the the most recent stuff, they've got Discovery stuff in there. I think they've got Picard stuff in there, or it's coming. But the, you know, right up to the modern day series, right back to the original TOS series. So wherever you're entering as a Star Trek fan, there's going to be something in the game for you. And I think ultimately that's the right decision, even if it sometimes you have to suspend disbelief as a player but you're always doing that in mmos to a greater or a lesser extent and i think choosing a specific era and staying there would have excluded too many too much of the fan base uh and as i was saying with my middle earth uh in uh, first impressions in 2021 bing go and have a look at it if you uh if you feel like seen what I thought of that game. That's another game with a strong IP at its core. And the way that a game portrays the IP is core to its success or failure in this regard. Strength of the mechanics is almost secondary to how it brings the world of these high profile IPs to life. And I think Star Trek does it very well. It's through the quests it's through the range of options whatever you're interested in and the the huge amount of customization that you can do um not necessarily i mean you do have face sliders for your character and stuff but the costume options um you can really tailor and you your costume and the costume of all your bridge officers you can make a really unique crew or you can make a crew that it that totally fits in line with whatever era of star trek the customization is is really extensive for anyone who is a star trek fan and then you can go crazy with it they've they've given people options to do an awful lot of things uh with the off-duty of uh, outfits and you can use that facility so you don't have to stick to a, a uniform you can just be a, a renegade mercenary crew if you want to so yeah that's a it, it's good in its representat representation of the Trek universe. The thing that's always let the game down, in my opinion, is the combat, specifically the ground combat. It, it's never feel, felt weighty, uh, particularly complex. Uh, it's one of those one of those few unique games that has com two completely different components to it, similar to Star Wars Galaxies with its jump to light speed component and the ground combat but really to think of other mmos that do this you have to go to something like uh star citizen and what that's talking about doing so having a complete game that is a ground game and a space game and the ground game always feels inferior to the space Flying around in the spaceship feels solid, feels impressive, looks impressive, feels fun to do. The ground combat has always felt weak. There's no weight to what you're doing. Your character feels paper thin as he's kind of sliding through these worlds. Uh, when you fire the, it, it, I was I was observing on stream. Actually, it's kind of interesting in the TOS and the the original series and the um, the next generation. Actu and some of the earlier series seasons of those shows when they do do a combat uh, a, a phaser fight it's like the phasers are a little bit lame and they don't have much impact to them and the sound effects are a little weak actually it, it reproduces that pretty well it does feel like some of those corny episodes of the show where they're where they're fighting but yeah, there's not much depth in terms of the mechanics. Uh, there's an interesting system with exploits, uh, exposing the enemy and then exploiting those uh, weak points that you can do so you can kind of gear your characters to do that. I know there is higher level content with the, with the ground combat uh, and maybe that gets a little bit more challenging. But yeah, compared to the space, which feels strong, uh, the ground combat is a little bit lackluster. But what the ground does really well is storytelling. And you really feel like you're in an episode of Star Trek when you're doing some of those quests, particularly on the ground. So it's almost like a trade-off. The, the space combat feels better as you control your ship, 
you've got your shield facings, various power distribution levels. You can kit the ship out exactly how you want and and it feels tactical and fun to do. Uh, the effects look look like the show and you do feel like you're flying around a, a big space battleship. It, it has that kind of weightiness to to the movement of the ships. You're not zipping around an awful lot. You can get some fast ships like the Defiant and stuff, but generally you're moving around these hulking cruisers and it's it's like a naval battle almost. They they reproduce that really well. But the the quest stuff in space is generally dialogue boxes and uh and talking to your bridge crew and enemy ships whereas on the ground they really do a good job of giving you wrinkles in the plot of what's going on on the various planets that you land on and to the extent that it feels like an episode uh thinking of one particular mission where basically i just had to run around a room and and on the surface it's absurd what you're doing you're just running from point a to point b pressing f to activate uh, the various consoles in sequence so something doesn't blow up mechanically it's so simple but they wrap it in a in a story that is often voiced by the actual voice actors from the tv shows uh that it feels like you're taking part in a story and and i do feel like that's the strength of the game in terms of the free-to-play model, it's not too egregious. I haven't paid anything yet, and I think you can go all the way up to max. I've certainly done it in the past, and um, I'm barreling that way now. It's at the point at which you get to the end game and you need your tier 6 ship that you really are faced with the idea of having to pay something for the first time. There are ways to get these high-level ships uh, through events, I think through lockboxes as well, and obviously you always have the option of paying for them at that point the argument is should they have brought in that need to pay something earlier so you're not suddenly struck with it at the end game you can't progress you've not been stopped from progression until the end game and you have to buy this tier 6 ship on reflection i feel like if i've played through an entire game and it's quests all the way to the end and then that game actually asks me to pay something I don't feel too bad about that. It's like, well, I've had a great time. And if I want to continue, I'll unlock this ship. I, I don't feel like that's too much to ask on the part of the developers. Yeah, they could be a little bit more transparent about it at, this, at the start. I never like these hard stops where they suddenly gate progression. But it is at the very end. It's at the at the end game. So I don't feel it's too bad having enormous fun playing it at the moment and it's because there's so much story in there and it's great the minute details that they go into uh callbacks to the episodes fully voiced characters with the actors from shows and tying it all together for star trek fan wherever you're coming from there's an awful lot there now an awful lot more than there was a decade ago and I have to say, of all the MMOs that I've jumped into over the last couple of weeks, Star Trek Online is the one that has clicked the most for me. It's the one I want to jump into. It's the one I'm thinking about now because I want to do the event that's going on at the minute before it, the time runs out. So the the devs are still adding stuff. They're, they're engaging the community, giving them timed events to do. It seems like it's very active and definitely worth jumping into it's not it's not coming to an end anytime soon and 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 similar to middle earth online lord of the rings online i don't know if we'll see another game that that tackles this because the, the star trek has gone a different direction since this game uh, came to be and i don't know if there was a star trek mmo coming out now there would be the level of concern in terms of tying it into the original series and the tone of the original series and uh and tng and those earlier shows so it's it's one of those games that i feel like however long it lasts it's worth jumping in to experience a dev team really trying to bring an experience to players that is that reminds them of their favorite tv show and I really appreciate that. I can see the level of 
detail and the the care and attentions that's been taken particularly in the quest so if you're thinking about giving it a go do get a, give it a go it's a very quick download and it actually does that cool thing where it kind of patches what you need on the fly so you don't have to download everything that's in the game the download doesn't take too long and then it kind of patches as you zone into certain areas that it needs so it's very quick to get into and as i say you don't have to pay anything as you're going up the level progression but do be aware that if you're going to do the end game you're going to have to pay something at some point whether you sub or whether you buy one of those tier six ships you can also play the long game and wait for one to be available through one of these timed events Thank you. I hope you're enjoying all my wrap-ups of these games that I'm playing. I'm playing a lot of them on Twitch live. So if you want to join me over there, there'll be a link to my Twitch channel in the description of the video. Thanks for watching and my MMO adventure. I really appreciate the support and I'll have another video in the future, hopefully examining another game that I'm playing right now. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.